large aquatic mammals closely related to the elephants. Sailors often mistook them for mermaids. Belize's manatees, the Antillean manatee, is an endangered species. Every manatee counts towards keeping the species from extinction. Belize is internationally considered to be very proactive towards the conservation of manatees. Manatees are very important to Belize. There are many reasons. First, um, because of tourism, it brings income to, um, to the country. Secondly, as it helps the ocean, the manatees and the ocean have a really mutual relationship as um, the manatees benefit from the ocean and the ocean benefits from the manatees. Manatees are important to me because they are endangered animals and need help, special help. Manatees are important for me because they um, clean the sea by eating the grass and when they excrete it work like a fertilizer for the sea. Kozabe is important for the manatees because they serve as their home. They, they obtain their food in, in the seabed, they eat seagrass. Alright, well my name is Joel Verde. I work for the Sardin Alliance for Conservation and Development. Uh, I'm the co-manager of Kozabe Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, well, first of all, you know that manatees are threatened threatened species um, uh, in Belize and all over the world um, and Corozabe Wildlife Sanctuary is, is home to them actually the reason why we have a healthy population in Corozabe is because uh, they are less threatened than in other areas around the country of Belize uh, because of the nature of Corozabe Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, the area is very important for the manatees. It, it provides uh, sheltered shallow estuary system that's a perfect habitat for for manatees. Corozabe also has extensive seagrass in the east coast and it also has some freshwater springs that um, provides fresh water to the manatees. Um, Corozabe is also important in nature because it's home to millions of juvenile fish uh, which is of economic importance to the country and to the community in itself. Um, to me, manatees are important because, first of all, they are gentle species. Uh, I like them because of their uniqueness. The sheltered waters of Corozal Bay provide critical habitat for mating and calving manatees. Recent aerial surveys have shown up to 78 manatees. With two calves already reported this year, the population is growing. As a protected area, the sanctuary is a haven for this endangered species. But, while Corozal Bay is safe, other places are not. Research shows that there are only about 2,500 Antillian manatees left in the world, hence them being on the IUCN Red List on Endangered Species. So far, in 2015, at least one manatee has died every week in Belizean waters. is internationally recognized as having acceptable management towards the conservation of manatees, we still need to make a stronger effort. Human impacts such as speeding boats colliding with manatees, fishing nets left unattended, coastal development and destruction of mangroves can all lead to manatee deaths or injured and orphaned manatees. Hi, I'm Jamie and I work for WildTrack. Wildtrek's Manatee Rehabilitation Program is one of Belize's four national wildlife rehab programs. The Manatee Rehab Center was established in 1999 by Wildtrek's under the Belize Marine Mammal Stranding Network and National Manatee Working Group to care for orphan and injured manatees found in Belize's water. The Manatee Rehabilitation Center falls under Wildtrek's Conservation Program, which has as its objective the long-term protection of biodiversity in Belize. Wattrax has intensive care for calves. At arrival, they go straight into the intensive care pool, where they are monitored throughout the night with the continuous surveillance of two volunteers. The second stage is the growth pool, 
Once they grow to the age where they start eating seagrass and to where they need more swimming space, then they're moved into the growth pool. Here, they are still bottle fed five times a day, but they begin to get their independence. The third stage is the lagoon enclosure. In this stage, the manatees start to learn about their natural environment and the skills needed to survive. The final stage is pre-release. The manatee starts to spend its days out in the lagoon, first with a carer, then on its own, returning to the lagoon enclosure at night. Carers are able to make sure it is finding enough seagrass on its own. After pre-release is release. The manatee is led into Corozal Bay where it is monitored by a satellite tag for 6 months, after which it is considered wild. I think people in general, especially those who, who don't really care, they should probably pay more attention to these guys because if we don't take care of them, they'll probably become like the selfish whereby we cannot find them anymore. This is important to me because I want the future generations to enjoy the presence of these mammals just as they do today. The simple thought that the lease is classified as having the highest known density of Antillian manatees in the world makes me feel proud because this means that we are on the right track. You see, manatees are more than just these big grey giants swimming around in the water. They're beneficial to us in various ways, acting as natural indicators to changing water temperatures, helping clear out the sea from the base of water hyacinths, as well as keeping the seagrass levels under control. What else could we want? These fascinating creatures provide so much assistance to us, the least we could do is protect them. Manatees are a unique addition to the many enchanting diversity of the sustains. So let's ensure their existence for the young Galicians out there.